MC and Makepeace, Saturday at 7. Now, Susan Hutchison, Harry Wampler Weather, Wayne Cody Sports, and Nightside reporter Mark Rolstad. This is Eyewitness News at 11. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Eyewitness News at 11. Tonight, we have a number of exclusives for you on our show, an important debate between the mayoral candidates, and we'll give you a sneak preview. In sports, Raider Busters 2 from Steve Rabel, and our very own Unknown Eater joins us tonight for a cozy coffee break. And the big story tonight, our exclusive from a jail in North Carolina. For the first time since his arrest early yesterday, Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh has spoken publicly. In an interview with CBS News via Skylink satellite tonight, the guru claims he was flying to Bermuda for a few days rest, not to escape federal prosecution. The Bhagwan is in jail in Charlotte, where he and seven followers were arrested after a cross-country flight from Rajneeshpuram, Oregon. Mark Rolstad has been following the story and is here with more. Mark? Susan, the Bhagwan denies knowing anything about a secret indictment last week which charged him and top aides with making false statements to federal immigration officials. Federal authorities claim the group was fleeing the United States after word of the charges leaked. Tonight, the guru vowed he will leave when his legal problems are resolved. Rajneesh walked into his first interview in jail, offering his familiar smile and sign of greeting. But the Bhagwan had never looked like this in public. Jail fatigues have replaced his colorful robes, and his head is no longer covered by a turban. His voice strained as he described his arrest by federal agents. And they were shouting, and I told them that there is no need to shout. You just tell me why you are arresting. And they will not tell. They just handcuffed me. I am not a criminal, and nobody has ever treated me this way. I am willing to come with you wherever you want. And if you want me to go back to Oregon, I can go back to Oregon. But I must know what is the reason. I had no idea of this indictment. I was just I'm going for a few days rest. Rajneesh denies he was fleeing the country, saying he has been fighting to gain permanent residence in the United States since he came here four years ago. I was fighting. The whole problem was that they were not giving me the green card and I have been fighting for it. But the way they have behaved with me has been so disappointing. Once it is finished, I will move. I will not stay here. What will become of your followers? No, I will take them to India. There is no problem. Rajneesh does have a problem, though. Charges against him, if proved, could keep him in jail for the rest of his life. And the 53-year-old says his poor health will begin causing him problems in the next couple of days. A nurse at the jail, though, Susan says the Bhagwan appears to be in good health. So he won't be moved to a hospital, as uh, some of his followers had wished. Doesn't appear so. Thank you, Mark. And what do the people in the quiet town of Charlotte, North Carolina, think about all this attention? Well, John Hollenhorst has that part of the story for us tonight. Charlotte is one of those southern cities with a modern urban core and a heart of traditional religious values. So, in the city where the Reverend Billy Graham was born, the coming of the Bhagwan has been a startling affair. It's not that he had no following here. In fact, one of the most startling parts of the story is the role played by a local woman, Maxine Levine, a dedicated Rajneeshi who attempted to arrange the Bhagwan's trip to Bermuda. Levine is the recently divorced wife of Alvin Levine, the co-founder and chairman of the Pick and Pay shoe store chain. He's one of the city's wealthiest and best-known philanthropists. A son and daughter are also active Rajneeshi who were standing by today as the saga continued to unfold, as told by another close associate of the Bhagwan. The hottest legal controversy is whether the guru meant to flee the country to avoid prosecution or simply came to Charlotte for a change of pace, not knowing he was under indictment. This was just for a few days get away from all the nonsense that's going on. 
The Bhagwan's attorney said he learned about the possible indictment of the guru too late to stop the departure. And when he tried to call the Lear Jets back to Oregon, he couldn't reach anyone. The Rajneeshi version is that Charlotte was the final destination of the party. Mrs. Levine was asked to arrange the hop to Bermuda, they say, only after the group began to suspect that news reporters would tail them to Charlotte. Well, <laughs> you guys make life a little difficult at times. We asked the sheriff whether the Bhagwan had been doing any preaching to his five cellmates. The sheriff responded, I doubt that he'd preach to them guys. They'd throw him through the bars. John Hollenhorst, Cairo Eyewitness News, Charlotte, North Carolina. Heading south now to Cape Canaveral, just hours from now, NASA launches its 22nd space shuttle mission. But this time around, the U.S. is only providing the driver in the vehicle. West Germany is running the show. It paid NASA $64 million to send a space laboratory into orbit for the European Space Agency. Two West Germans and a Dutchman will accompany five American astronauts, making this another new record crew. Liftoff is scheduled for 9 a.m. our time, providing remnants of Hurricane Juan don't get in the way over Cape Canaveral. The man who took the Boeing company on its flight from obscurity to dominance in the jet age is dead. William Allen died at his North Seattle home today following a long illness. He was 85. Bob Branham reports on the life of this pioneer of the jet age. No one's career is perfect, and William Allen's was no exception. But his only real failure came at the hands of Congress, which refused to pay for development of the SST. Allen refused to develop the supersonic transport without government support. It was one of the few times Bill Allen did not bet the company on a new project. He literally gambled the company many times. When he built the 707, Boeing's first jetliner, still used by the president and the vice president. When he built the 727, which is the biggest selling commercial airliner of all time when he built the 737, currently Boeing's hottest seller. And in September 1968, when he bet Boeing's bank and rolled out the 747, a plane that now flies the world. We are witnessing today an important milestone in an enterprise, which for sheer magnitude is surely one of the largest non-governmental undertakings in the history of our country. Allen was born in Lolo, Montana in 1900. He graduated from Harvard Law School and was a principal lawyer for Boeing before World War II. After the war, he took the company's helm, steering Boeing from chiefly military to mainly commercial airplane sales. He retired 13 years ago at the age of 72, proudly honored as the father of the modern commercial jetliner. Bob Branham, Cairo, Eyewitness News. And we do have more to tell you about tonight. The general election is just a week away. We'll have the results of the latest Cairo poll. We'll also show you a preview of tomorrow night's election debate. And we'll tell you about a possible breakthrough in treating AIDS. If you think there's no room for improvement in small trucks today, then go let the dog out because you wouldn't want to know about Mazda's new Cab Plus, a small truck that's really big inside. Introducing Mazda's all-new B2000 Cab Plus. One of the roomiest cabs in its class includes room back here for two adults plus unusual levels of quietness, ride, and handling. It's also the lowest-priced extended cab truck. Get a lot of value at your Puget Sound Mazda dealer today. <laughs> 